Hello and welcome to a brand new Vauxhall Crossland X. It is the smallest member to join the X SUV family and it's the first car to be built on a PSA platform. But what's it like to drive? Well, let's find out. So bearing in mind this is an SUV which is going to be predominantly used for families, it has to be practical. So what's space like in the back? Let's have a look. Let's jump in like so. Right, okay. Okay, it's not too bad. So as always, the driver's seat has been altered for my six foot two frame and the legroom is definitely more than agreeable. So a lot of passengers should have no problems in regards to legroom. But what about headroom? Hmm, that's not quite as good if I'm gonna be honest. So anyone taller than me, six foot three, six foot four, so forth, they may struggle. But most passengers should be able to get in the back of the Crossland X with no problem. And if you bear in mind that most of the time, you're probably going to, be, going to be carting the kids around, aren't you? They should have no problems in the back whatsoever. Although, I would have liked a headrest in the middle, but I'm being picky. But what about the boot? Well, that offers 410 litres with the rear seats up and 1,255 litres with them down. That makes it bigger than the Nissan Duke and the Renault Capture, and it's about the same as the Peugeot 2008. Techline nav models and above also get a height adjustable boot for better practicality. So underneath the bonnet is a 1.2 turbocharged petrol unit which produces 128 brake horsepower with 230 newton meters of torque. It's made to a six-speed manual gearbox which I have to say feels rather notchy and it doesn't feel that precise if I'm going to be completely honest. It will hit 62 miles per hour in 9.1 seconds and the top speed is 128 miles per hour. It's made to two, two wheel drive as well, so that's front wheel drive. If you're after four wheel drive, then you will have to get a Mocha X or you can get the Grandland X when that comes out next year. The Crossland X may be the baby of Vauxhall's SUV family, but truth be told, it doesn't seem that much smaller than the Mocha X in all honesty. This is the first car to be built on a PSA platform. So PSA is the group that owns Peugeot, Citroen and DS automobiles. So this is built on their platform and it's made using their engines. So new engines to the Vauxhall range. And so far I'm not bowled over by this one. I have to be completely honest with you. But it does make some pretty decent progress, I have to say. The engine does indeed make good progress, but unfortunately the gearbox is always getting in your way and it is rather frustrating. Oh God. <sighs> I must say, I am struggling with that gearbox. The ride is quite busy as well. These roads aren't particularly awful, but this car isn't really settled, in all honesty. It's not uncomfortable, but it's just not quite as smooth as I would like it to be. And it is rather firm. And then as you build up the pace, I have to say the engine does make good progress. So we're doing 60 now. And the ride does feel rather busy. It is rather fidgety. So I don't really feel a benefit from the firm suspension. I haven't really hit that many corners yet. But so far, there is definitely body roll. I know it's an SUV, but you'd expect with a firmer suspension setup that it would be a little bit flat in regards to handling, but I'm afraid not. I don't like its handbrake either. I'm being very picky, but this handbrake, the way how it's designed, it's, it's a very odd shape. I'll tell you what, for an SUV with a 1.2 litre engine, this don't half move. It really does, right? Stick it in here. Oh, oh, God. That ride almost feels needlessly firm, if you ask me especially when it's still quite wallowy in the corners. Now at this point you're probably thinking, does he like anything about this car? Well the inside is a nice place to be. You've got the panoramic roof so it makes it nice and airy in here. I do rather like a panoramic roof. One thing I do like about this model compared to the courses I drove earlier today is that the TFT display, it's colour, it looks crisp, it looks modern, it looks sleek and to put it simply it just looks so much better than the other displays on the courses which looked like they were from the last decade whereas this is bang up to date so yes i do rather like that 
but yes but inside is a nice place to be you've got a soft touch dashboard everything is laid out quite nicely it looks quite tasteful all the controls make sense this seven inch infotainment system is nice and easy to use and it's well presented so i've got no issue with that let's pop it back onto the nav speaking of kit let me talk you through the specification this is the elite model which is towards the top of the range and is priced from £17,755. For this you'll get standard features such as 17 inch alloys, dual zone climate control, cruise control, 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system, rear parking sensors and Vauxhall OnStar. Now I mentioned navigation a few moments ago but that's an optional extra and the same goes for the panoramic roof, the paintwork as well as a few other features on this model. So the car tested is priced at £23,580. And these seats are rather nice. I do rather like the design on them. What about refinement? Well, road noise isn't too bad. It's a fair bit of wind noise, but again, it's an SUV, so it's a higher car. You're bound to get more of that. That's just the lane departure warning. Excuse that. But the tyre noise isn't too bad, this is riding on 17 inch alloys. And yes, it's audible, but is it intrusive? I don't think so. I'm still not quite sure what I make of the engine though. I don't think it sounds that pleasing. It doesn't shout at you, but it sounds quite gravelly, it sounds a bit rough to me. The engine note may not be to my liking, but what about economy? Well, on a combined run, you'll be able to get up to 55.4 mpg with 116 grams per kilometre. But if you need more economy, take a look at the 98 brake horsepower 1.6 litre turbo diesel, which offers up to 76.3 mpg on a combined run with 95 grams per kilometre of CO2 emissions. I have to say this is quite a peculiar car, purely because it's actually pretty nippy. It's got firm suspension, yet it doesn't really have that fun factor when it comes to driving. The cornering isn't brilliant. The steering, I have to say, isn't too bad, and once you get up to speed, it has got a nice weight to it. And to me, it feels rather direct. So I've got no complaints in regards to the steering, but it's definitely, oh yes, there's definitely some body roll. Still, it has got firm suspension, so I would have expected it to be a little flat in the corners, but it does wallow about a bit. It's not overly impressive. Brakes aren't overly sharp, and the pedal hasn't got a great amount of feel. I have to be honest, so far, I'm not bowled over by this car. Now, I have driven for Mocket X briefly, and although it didn't blow me away, it seemed to be a pretty capable car, but this Crossland X, I'm not too sure. This is, of course, the first Vauxhall car to be built on a PSA platform, and I hope there's better things to come. So, for Crossland X, I have to be honest, in my short time with the car, I wasn't bowled over by it. The gearbox is a bit too notchy, not too sure of the engine note, and the ride is too jiggly. It does have its plus points, of course. It's a rather nippy SUV, and the inside is a nice place to be, but the SUV market is so competitive at, at the moment, I just don't think the Crossland X quite has enough to cut it. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, and please subscribe for more Car Obsession.